welcome to the Feed You podcast, giving you the real scoop on raising your business to new heights. Expert education, inspiration, and motivation to fuel your purpose, your passion, and your profits. Here's your host, Elisa Connor. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Feed You podcast. How is everybody doing? It's so weird for me that I'm not on here every week. I'm, I'm doing podcasts every other week, so... Um, I love to like come and see you and come and chat with you guys again uh, on the weeks that I am back. So this week, uh, our topic is, so you've built a sales funnel, you built it and yet no one has come. It's not like build a dreams at all, is it? Uh, It can be very discouraging because as you and I both know, it takes a lot of time to set up a sales funnel or you have um, substantial, you have invested a substantial amount of money to someone else uh, to set up your sales funnel. And when it isn't working, uh, it is super frustrating because you were told, everyone told you if you built a sales funnel, the people will come. Well, this week's episode is going to dive into three reasons that people are not showing up for your sales funnel and either not opting in for your freebie or purchasing your products because there are different sales funnels for different um types of marketing in your business. And I talked about those a few episodes back. I'll link that in the show notes so you guys can get to that episode. I think it was episode uh, 107, but I, oh, my my old lady brain is not um, <clears throat> pulling up the exact number. So if that is incorrect, um, I will have the correct link in the show notes for this episode, which you can find at elisaconnor.com forward slash 110, 110. Um, this is episode 110. So I want to apologize in advance if you hear some background noise as I'm recording this. Everyone at my house is homeschooling right now, and so there's definitely a little bit more activity in the background, and um, you just may hear a little bit of noise. So I apologize if that is uh, showing up on the recording. Without further ado, let's dive into the three biggest mistakes that most course uh, course creators and small business owners and um, online marketing peeps uh, make when setting up their sales funnel. Uh, mistake number one, you are way too general with who you are talking to, with your messaging, with what you're giving away, with your ads, you name it. Um, this is the biggest mistake I see both with clients and with people that, um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of a cyber stalker and I go look at other people's sales funnels all the time. And um, this is the biggest thing that people don't, uh, they don't handle. And so they're not seeing the success that they, that they should and um, would see if they were a little bit more clear. So when I say getting specific, your audience, and this could be a community, this could be a group of people, this could be a specific person. um, They have characteristics in common And one of the biggest characteristics is they have a problem and they are looking for a solution to that problem. And if you are the person that can give it to them and you can explicitly tell them in your copy that you have the solution to their problem, that you understand their problem, they are going to be more likely to give you their email address or their credit card or both. Um, So when you haven't identified a specific problem that you help with and you're trying to solve all of the problems, Um, or you're trying to solve a a general problem, um, you're not gonna get as much traction. The the biggie here is that one, um, your ideal customers, your target market, however you wanna look, however you wanna define those people, they are looking for a specific answer. They're not just going out and saying, I want white bread. They're saying, I want Sara Lee artisan white bread because it's fluffy and it reminds me of my grandma's homemade bread. So when you say, hey, we sell white bread, they're gonna be like, that's great, I don't care because what I'm looking for is the Sara Lee artisan or artisano, I don't know, I'm gonna screw, I'm gonna just say it's artisan bread. (laughs) I want that kind, I don't want just white bread. Um, And we live in a very crowded marketplace, both uh, specifically online, but also in any kind of uh, product establishment. There are people, there are thousands of people that do what I do. Thousands, probably hundreds of thousands. Um, and chances are there are many, many people that do what you do and have products similar to you or services that are similar to you. 
And so how do you become the person that stands out? Now, I'm going to do a plug here for an upcoming episode. Um, It's probably going to be a video episode, but it's going to be talking about the critical role that customer service is going to play in the future of all businesses. And so um, I'm just going to do a little plug there. It's coming up in the next couple of episodes, um, but I see a direct connection um, between people that are offering excellent customer service and success versus people that are just like, yeah, whatever, um, and their lack of success. So um, not to go, you can see I had a little ADD moment there, but what I what I really want to talk about is that your, your audience is getting really, um, they're really clear about the solution they need. And when you're unclear that you provide that solution to their specific problem, they're gonna pass you by and look for somebody that has the the words in their copy and in their marketing that say, we have artisan, Sarah Lee White artisan bread available. And by the way, it's on sale this week. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking for generic white bread. So um, when you get really specific with your solution and you can give them a quick win, like for example, it's on sale, Um, and you can think outside of the box about how to approach them, you're going to stand out in all of your marketing, whether it's an ad or it's email or it's a a social media post or it's, uh, say you're doing direct messaging to people. There's a million different ways you can approach people. But when you go in with the same old, same old that everybody else does, um, they're, they're not looking for your solution. I have people email me all the time on LinkedIn or direct message me on LinkedIn. And they're like, Hey, we have, we do this. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm not looking for that. Um, and it, it's a really an immediate turnoff is what it ends up being. And so I would rather prepare you to be specific about who you help and how you help them and get you traction in what you're doing with that specificity. So number one problem to avoid is do not be too general. Don't try to serve everybody. Don't try to give everybody an all-in-one solution. Give a specific solution to a specific group of people and you will see um, results. So the example I came up for this, besides the bread, (laughs) for this um, being too general is that you may be a dog trainer. Maybe you offer um, in maybe not in home because we have COVID, but maybe you do like a mobile dog training where you have like a little uh, van that you bring to their house and you do dog training in the front yard and they can watch or they can learn or whatever. Um, or you do videos. I don't, I don't know exactly what it would be, but instead of saying dog training that works, your copy would say something like five things to do today to keep Fido from destroying your furniture. People are gonna be like, oh yeah, my dog, well, is not named Fido, but I don't care because Lassie is totally chewing up all of my furniture and I don't know what to do about it. Um, It's a very specific problem and you're just, you're gonna cut through the noise immediately when you get really specific like that. So that is mistake number two. Mistake number two, or, or mistake number one. Mistake number two is that you are your very own best kept secret. And this is another, uh, I'm, I'm using all of these references like Field of Dreams because I feel like sometimes we live in this alternative reality when it comes to our marketing. Um, I have people that uh, I have created websites for and they're like, oh, now everyone's going to find me. And I'm like, do you have any idea how many websites are published every single day? If you don't tell people about your awesome product or service or your awesome freebie, they're not going to psych psychically know about it. Like you have to go out and you have to tell them and you have to tell them again and you have to tell them again and you have to tell them again and you have to tell them again. And I know that it takes work and I know that it takes effort. Um, but if you aren't promoting your stuff, you are not going to get traction. Um, there's no magical internet fairy that's going to send you leads. There's no magical internet fairy that's going to go out and promote your stuff for you. And the reality is, is that you should be spending 80 to 90% of your time promoting your stuff and 10% creating it. And most people have, they do the opposite. And I'm going to, I'm totally raising my hand because I have done the same thing. And one of the things that I'm drawn the line, uh, the, the line in the sand on is that I will, um, 
not be creating as much content. You're going to see a lot of things that are repurposed. Um, and you're going to see a lot more promotion coming out. I've already started on that bandwagon. Um, but just really promote, 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 because we have been told this misnomer of it's not okay to promote your business and promote yourself. Well, when you're creating content, um, I want you to look at that as like promote your content because when you're promoting your content, you are leading them down the path to purchase from you, but you're not immediately saying, Hey, buy my stuff. And so, um, a lot of small business owners think that they write a blog post and people just magically go over there and see it. Well, they don't. You have most of your audience and most people in general have to see things at a minimum of eight times before they ever even pay attention to it. And a good example of this, like, I don't know about you guys, but uh, in the last couple of weeks with Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I was like inundated with emails and I'm going, what in the world? Well, everybody's home. They don't have another way to get in front of people. Um, Netflix doesn't have commercials. Everybody's binge watching that. You hear, you see it all the time, binge watching Netflix and Disney Plus and all these places that don't have commercials. And so they've got to get in front of their audience. So I'm sure you saw ad after ad after ad and marketers have gotten really smart about retargeting people when they have, um, you know, mentioned something that they're interested in purchasing or they visited a website or they clicked on a lead magnet or whatever that is. Um, but the email for sure is just inundating in the inbox. It's slowed down a little bit now, but um, when you are in the um, inbox and you're standing out because you're promoting something that's of value to them, that's gonna actually help them be happier, more successful, whatever it is, you're going to stand out automatically because you're not there to pitch them, you know, the greatest deal, the next coupon, blah, blah, blah. You just have to kind of think outside the box of how to get in front of your people. So here are some ways that you can get in front of your people and start to promote your content. You can get um, social and there are as you know, a million different social platforms to be on. So I often get the question, where should I be? And my short, um, not snarky answer is where are your people? And nine times out of 10, people don't know. They don't know where their people are. And you will not see traction if you don't know where your people are. Now, your people may be in various places. So if that's the case, I want you to think about um, why are they showing up in the places that they're showing up? So for example, if you're going after corporate professionals and you're on LinkedIn, are they there to represent their company? Are they there to look for a job? Or are they there to do marketing for uh, their own company? Are they there to look for resources? Like why are they showing up there? Versus those same people may be showing up on, on Facebook, but the reason they're showing up on Facebook is they wanna connect with family, they wanna connect with friends, they wanna sh see what's happening with um, people that they know and that they've met they're not there to be sold to, or if they are, they're probably there to be sold something that's more on a consumer level. So maybe it's Christmas um, presents, or maybe it's, you know, their refrigerator just went out and they were talking to a friend about it. And now they're going to see refrigerator ads because the power of marketing. So um, not only knowing where they are, but what their intention is for showing up there, because the different platforms have very different uh, uh, expectations. I don't know another word to stick in there. They, they are all very different platforms and people show up there with different intentions and you need to be aware of what those intentions are because if you're going to market the same way you do on Instagram, on LinkedIn, it's not gonna work. And so um, when you're getting social and you're putting your stuff out there, just be cognizant of why people are showing up on that platform and what their mindset is. Uh, second way you can promote your content and your stuff is to email your people and do it regularly and do it consistently. Uh, the third one I start on here is to start conversations. Um, I read a statistic the other day that the conversion rate on direct messages and on um, regardless of platform is like 80% higher than any other marketing uh initiative out there right now. People want and are craving conversation, especially after the last nine months of COVID. They want to have connection with people. They want to feel heard. They want to be understood. And when we can create those conversations with people, 
and start conversations with people, we will find much better traction. That does not mean go blast everybody's inbox or their Facebook messenger or whatever it is with your sales pitch. That means you reach out and you start a conversation. If you would not walk up to somebody in a room full of people and at a networking event or whatever and say what you're going to say in that message, don't send it. Because you would not walk up to somebody and start your used car sales pitch at a networking event, because if you did, they would walk away. And that's exactly what they'll do in an online environment. So start conversations, not sales pitches. And then um, the other thing that I wanted to point out in here is that, yeah, it may seem like this take it's hard, it's too hard, it takes too much time. But in reality, if you dedicated 10 or 15 minutes a day to just starting conversations with people within I would say two weeks, I'm going to say 30 days, but I, I bet it's within two weeks, you're going to see a, a huge difference in your business. So take the challenge with me. Who are you going to connect with in the next 14 days and report back? Send me an email. You can, um, or come and comment on this post at elisaconnor.com forward slash 110 and let me know, um, you know, what kind of traction you're getting. Okay, so that is a uh, critical mistake number two. You are keep you are keeping yourself the best um, kept secret. So, critical mistake number three is you're not solving a problem. And we alluded to this a little bit in um, number one when you're not talking to a specific group of people. But uh, most often, where I see marketing fail specifically is when people are pushing their product versus a solution that their audience is looking for. Your product is not their solution. Your product of, um, I want white bread that tastes like my grandma used to make homemade is not necessarily Sara Lee. I only know that because I tried it, but because their marketing, um, I wish I had the package in front of me so I could read it to you, but I don't. It's the same thing with uh, dog training, the dog training example that I gave earlier. Um, I don't want dog training. I want Fido to stop chewing on my furniture. And so I'm looking for people that can help me get this dog to stop chewing on my furniture. I don't want to know about how to teach him how to sit and play fetch and roll over and play dead or bark on demand or, or any of those things. What I want right now is for him to stop chewing up my furniture. And so um, all the other things can come later. I might want those later, but right now I have this huge pain point that he keeps chewing up all my an- antique furniture and I can't replace it. And so I need him to quit. So when you look at solving a specific problem and that, that solution is not your product, it's your product is how they get to the solution. And so um, the solution in that example I just gave you is that Fido stops chewing up my furniture. That's the solution. Your product is how I make that happen. And so I want you to think about that when you're creating um, your marketing, because most, I, I, I bet it's more than nine out of 10 people. If you go and you start studying marketing like I do, you're gonna see like most people are pushing their product or solution and it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter if you have an online course. It doesn't matter if you have a, you know, a, a grocery store. It doesn't matter if you are selling an actual physical product like stamp companies. Um, there's just, your customers are not looking for that product. They are looking for what that product gives them. So um, when you are pushing your product and marketing your product versus marketing what your product will do for them, you're not going to see success. So the example that I stuck in here is that Apple releases a new I product. I'm going to say I just stuck with iPhones because they they do this regularly, but they release a new iPhone every 12 to 18 months. An iPhone is not um, a small investment. Like it's you're in for a grand, but you don't see them worrying about sales. You don't see them going, oh, I hope people buy this. No, they've got people lined up around the block to buy that phone. They sell out in minutes. And why is that? Because they have trained their audience in what um, they want them to be trained in. 
And so that audience wants quicker speed. They want a better network. So like right now they're going from a 4G to a 5G network. They want that new network capacity. They want more memory on their phone because they're not just using it as a phone anymore. They're using it as a small computer. They have all their pictures on there, all their notes, their calendar, on and on and on. Um, They want the new technology that's coming out. Every time Apple releases a a new product, there's new tech that's involved in that. I got the iPhone 12 because of the camera. I wanted it with all the new camera options and the ability to take better pictures than than an actual camera um, and the education that goes behind how to use those features. That is what part of what makes Apple successful is that they have created demand for something before it existed with their current client client base and then additional people. They make it easy to use. They hold your hand through the process. Um, They give you an an automatic upgrade for your old old technology if you want to trade it in. All of that stuff. They work with every phone carrier. So they make it super easy for you to go, go from I have an old phone to I want the new phone or I want all of these things that the new phone will give me. So I'm, I wanna turn in my old phone because it's slow and it doesn't connect very well. And I wanna be on the faster network because I don't have a very good network connection where I live. And I'm running out of room because I've take, taken 100,000 pictures of my kids and, and I think that's slowing things down and I'm just frustrated because I have to turn it on and off all the time. So I want all of that stuff to go away. And I know a new phone will do that. So when you are creating your marketing, I want you to think about that as an example. I want you to think about, okay, so if I'm going to deliver the best white bread out there that tastes exactly like grandma made it, what what is that customer looking for? Well, they're looking for nostalgia. They're looking for like a super awesome grilled cheese sandwich that's gonna taste just like better than any grilled cheese sandwich you've ever made. So maybe you create a grilled cheese sandwich recipe using your bread. And you could even partner with a um, YouTuber that specializes in grilled cheese. You could partner with a cheese company and get your message out there about how great your bread is with their cheese. So there's all these different things you could do. Um, But ultimately, your customer is going to buy that bread because they want to experience the best grilled cheese sandwich ever. And they can't do it without your bread. So that is mistake number three. You have to be solving a problem. And the more specific the problem, the better. So as you know, I've been adding bonuses not only to these episodes, but also to my video episodes that you can find over on YouTube. And the link for that is in my show notes as well. Um, But this is probably the biggest problem that I find with anybody that I start working with prior to working with them. And that is that they don't know what to improve because they haven't measured anything that they've been doing. And so your bonus tip is to make sure that everything you're doing with your marketing, everything that you have put into your sales funnel, you are measuring. And so um, when you start to make changes, you can see what is working and what isn't working. Now, most times when people build out a sales funnel, they're like, oh, it's not working, I'm gonna scrap it and start all over. Please, please, please don't do that. because it could just be one small thing that you need to tweak. And if you're not measuring, you're not gonna know. And there are several different things you can measure, including like links that are clicked on, um, page visits, you know, how far people get on the form. That's all stuff that people um, that are in the sales building world, like me in, in the marketing world can help you with. So if you don't know how to do those things, that's perf- That's something I can totally help you do. Um, or you know you can just look into your specific service provider and see what tools and options they offer. If they don't offer that, you probably, no, not probably, you need to be looking at a different tool. If you don't have analytics that measures specific pieces of your sales funnel, um, you need to look at a different system because there is no point in putting a sales funnel out there, putting all the pieces together and not knowing what is or is not working. So if somebody gets through the form, and then um, maybe they never get an email. And so it never, it never goes any further. So there's a problem there, but you wouldn't know that that email didn't go if you don't have analytics on how many emails people have opened, what links they have clicked on, how far they have continued to go, where did they go after they clicked, did they go to your store to purchase a product, 
yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't want to go too deep in the weeds here, but measure, measure, measure. And then if you're going to make a shift, only change one thing at a time, because then you need to continue to measure it and see what needs to be changed. So that's what I have for you this week. Just to wrap up, um, the three biggest mistakes that I see most people make with their sales funnel is that they are way too general with their information um, that they're trying to deliver and they're not reaching their audience. They are uh, not promoting their sales funnel or their products or their content. And so nobody knows about it. They're the best kept secret out there, but that's not doing them a lick of good to sell any products or services. And then the the biggest mistake, number three, is that they're not solving a problem. They just are promoting their own stuff and they never get to the solution or um, creating a solution to their customer's problem. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Again, you can find all the information and notes for this episode over at alisaconnor.com forward slash 110. And uh, I would love for you, if you need help with this, I am actually opening up my sales funnel course here on, uh, today's the seventh when I'm recording this. So I'm opening it up on the 16th of December and it will be open through the end of the month and then it will be closed again. So if you're interested in getting some help with your sales funnel and you don't know, um, how to, you know, create that opt-in that's going to get people to opt in, or you, you're having problems with their emails, or you don't know how to connect everything together. These are all things that are going to be covered in, in my online course. So if you want more information about that, you can go to alisaconnor.com forward slash SMS waitlist and get on um, the waitlist to be the first to know when that opens up. Again, it'll be happening on the 16th, but you'll get um, an email reminder and then several reminders after that. So again, I'll link that over on the show notes at alisaconnor.com forward slash 110. In the meantime, I will see you in a couple weeks for episode 111. And I hope that you are healthy uh, and that you are focusing on a better 2021 for yourself and your business. Take care. The Ideal Client Worksheet helps you discover the important questions that you need to ask when it comes to finding your clients. It will help you understand them, understand their problems so that you connect with them, attract them, turn them into leads, and convert them into customers. So go grab your copy today at alisaconnor.com forward slash ideal client. See you next week.